thank you everyone for coming tonight. Um, we can move to the next slide. So uh, I think my introduction is pretty simple because uh, I was born in Poland and I grew up in the countryside Northwest of Chicago, but I came to the University of Chicago for college and then I absolutely fell in love with the place and I never left. Um, so I was here for uh, medical school and residency and fellowship. And then I begged and begged and begged to stay for my job and here I am. So I'm uh, happy to be a part of this amazing place. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, so to introduce you to what I do, um, it really has to do with the fact that uh, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with all of um, the ways that we learn about things in surgery. And so I'll explain that. Uh, most doctors practice in the medicine in the way that they were taught. They do what their professors did um, because clearly they had lots and lots of grateful patients. And so we know that that worked for them but how do we really know what is the best treatment for a certain disease? And as doctors move on from the way that they were trained, we learn um, throughout our careers based on available scientific literature. And so one example of that is that new medications are tested against the old and tried and true treatments. We heard a lot of that from some of the other amazing researchers today. And so based on new information, we change our practice. But what about in surgery? New operations are really few and far between. There's lots of variations throughout the country in how an operation is done. And so most of the available surgical literature is actually based on looking back on the experience of all of those different surgeons around the country and around the world. And so mostly what that means is the information is collected after an operation is done and after a patient's result has already happened. And that kind of information has a huge potential for data bias because an eager researcher is going to be looking back and they might be swayed to interpret a patient's outcome in a certain way. And of course, they're not meaning to do that. They're, um, you know, it's human nature. They're uh, potentially biased to what they think the right answer is. And so when we look at the data, in fact, a lot of studies actually come to very contradictory conclusions. And so how do we know what the truth actually is? Which operation is the best one? Uh, next slide, please. So that being said, I actually think that retrospective data analysis is still important, meaning analysis of our experience in the past. Um, but it's important in a way that I'll call hypothesis generating. So it makes us stop and think and maybe devise a way to test the question in a better and more comprehensive way. So some examples of my experience in that retrospective um, data analysis are shown here. Um, this first one is based on a uh, study that I did when I was still a trainee here at the University of Chicago, where we were looking at our experience with surgery for ulcerative colitis. And so when patients have their entire colon and rectum removed and replaced with something called a J pouch so that they can still have um, normal defecation, um, that operation is very sensitive and very um, potentially fragile. When we looked back at our experience, we actually discovered that patients who had had an infection with Clostridium difficile, which is a very common colon bacteria before their operation, were much more likely to have poor function and even lose the pouch after their reconstruction. Uh, next. This past year, um, I had the opportunity to mentor someone of my own. This was our colorectal surgery fellow who's shown um, in his presentation to our main society um, we worked together to study two ideas. This first one is um, a question of whether doing an ostomy bag for a patient with a pressure sore, so a way to divert the stool away from their wound while it heals, um, whether that's a safe operation. And we looked back at some of our data. We found um, that actually for a couple of, uh, or some of those patients, depending on their risk factors, it was actually very, very risky to do that operation. Uh, next. And we also looked at our national experience in treating early rectal cancer um, and found that many patients who have an early cancer and go on to have surgery are actually found to have much more advanced disease after the operation. And so they would have benefited from getting chemotherapy and radiation before surgery. Um, and that's something that's not currently recommended for that stage of rectal cancer. Um, next. 
So overall, um, thanks to the general support of the Growth Foundation in the past year, in addition to my clinical work, I was able to complete the Master of Science in Public Health Sciences for clinical health professionals here at the university. Um, and that was a very immersive experience in statistics and research methods, and it's meant to prepare me for a career to be a thorough and excellent clinical researcher. So with that amazing tool in my toolbox, I'm now launching the very first University of Chicago colorectal surgery outcomes database. And it's officially approved by our IRB. Um, and I've started to work with a research assistant collecting um, data on some of our patients. And the, the important reason for doing this is that this will be collected prospectively. So all patients who are having surgery at our um, hospital for colorectal issues will be asked permission to include their data in this database, and we will record the results of how they do from their surgery in real time. So hopefully that will erase the potential bias that results from looking backward. And we plan to use that for our own purposes, meaning quality assurance, making sure that our patients are getting the best care possible, but we'll also plan to collaborate with other hospitals to compare those outcomes so that we can all learn from our experiences and improve the care of as many patients as possible. Um, next, thank you everyone so, so much for that opportunity. I really feel very blessed to be a part of this. It really is important. Uh, clinical studies, I think are essential. Uh, this is where we generate a lot of questions that we uh, will investigate either clinically or experimentally. And so maybe Kinga, I can start with you with a question. In, in terms of uh, uh, these types of prospective studies that you talk about, how do you determine uh, when uh, you can actually make a conclusion? I mean, how many patients do you think you need to answer a question? And how long do these studies typically take? That's a really great question and something we talked a lot about in my master's courses because it has to do with the power of the statistical tests that you can do. So it really depends on the disease that we're looking at. Um, if it's something that's very, very rare, um, it would take a very long time to gather enough patients to be able to see a difference between two procedures, for example. So um, that kind of takes me to your second question, which is how long would this be going on for? Our intention is to collect the information for as long as possible so that we can gather enough of those sort of rare cases to be able to tell a difference um, and know whether a certain operation is, is helpful. Great. And uh, can I ask you, um, you know, uh, most of us that work in the lab actually uh, interact very closely with colorectal uh, surgery section. And uh, are you, uh, I, I saw that you're working with uh, Dr. Rubin. Are there uh, more uh, basic types of people that you're interacting with? Yes, absolutely. I, um, I had done some basic science research as a surgical resident here, um, more on a cancer side of things. And so I had worked with Dr. Wexelbaum and um, some of the other scientists on the radiation oncology side. Um, but having um, the background in statistics that I have now, I'm actually starting to work with Dr. Shogun quite a bit to um, help analyze some of the scientific work um, that he's doing. And so I'm open and happy to collaborate anytime with um, some of the basic science folks wherever I can. 